Okay, today's video is a review for the test that you're going to have tomorrow. And this video basically covers most of the items that are in the test. And we're going to look at uh, a lot of the things we've been doing these last few weeks in class. I would really like you to go back and revisit some of the videos on YouTube in regard to the reactions in the labs that we've done recently. Uh, those labs include the Lights Out Lab. Uh, I would also like you to look at the Dropping Out Lab. I'd like you to look at Warming Up. I'd like you to look at the super saturation, uh, chalk it up. I'd also like you to look at the color uh, swap or color change. I forget what the name of that video was. But look back on my YouTube channel and view those labs just as a refresher about the reactions we're looking at and what's going on with those. Today for the review, I want to look at the reaction of photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is a reaction that happens with green plants. And as you know, green plants require carbon dioxide. That is basically what they take in. And with carbon dioxide and the water they absorb through the roots and stems and leaves, in the presence of sunlight, generates what plants need, which is energy, or the product they need for energy, which is uh, glucose, which is a type of sugar. And then they also release oxygen as a waste product in the reaction that goes on with photosynthesis. Now, plants are the only thing really that's able to do this. There are certain types of bacteria that also contain the green pigment chlorophyll that allows them to go through photosynthesis. But essentially, plants are required for all living things on our planet, not just for food, but for the oxygen that is the waste product they give off. So we're going to look a little bit at this reaction to kind of demonstrate and look at some of the main concepts from this six weeks. So one thing I want us to understand is everything on the left side of the arrow are called reactants. Now that's pretty easy to remember because reactants are the things that react when we get them together. So the reactants of this particular equation are carbon dioxide and water, H2O. Now, remember the, the arrow sign means yields. It basically says when these guys get together, they're going to yield or make something new. And so what's happening here is this arrow is like an equal sign in math. These items equal this substance here. Now, if you notice, nothing is written the same. We have the same letters being used, representing the atoms in the, in the molecules, but they're reattaching themselves like the labs we've been doing in class. So basically, you have carbon atoms, oxygen atoms, hydrogen atoms. And if we look over here, we have carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, oxygen atoms. And so we have all the same atoms, but they've just rearranged themselves and reattached themselves. Now, what happens with that? is it's the valence electrons that do this business of reattaching and unattaching. And remember, that's called bonding. Now, bonding is what forms compounds. Remember, compounds are items that are made by more than one type of atom that are put together. So the products are what's on the right side of the arrow. So these are called products. Now our products are the C6H12O6, that's our glucose molecule. And then we also have oxygen molecules which are made O2. And so these are the products, the end result of our reaction. So basically carbon dioxide with, the, with water and the use of the sun's energy produces our products which are glucose and oxygen. So let's kind of break this down a little bit and see what else we can determine from this. Now if we notice the sun's energy is required, that is our catalyst. Okay, so our catalyst is what speeds up a reaction or gets it started. Okay, it's our activation energy. Without the sun's energy, this can't happen. So we need the energy of light to make this happen. So let's take a look at some of the other things here. Well, we have CO2, but if you notice we have six molecules of CO2. Okay, so this would be one molecule, so if I had a carbon atom, so let's call that carbon attached to oxygen, okay, so this would be an oxygen atom attached to another oxygen atom, okay, that would be a molecule of carbon dioxide, CO2, so there's one C and two O's, but we actually have two of them, or six of those together, so it would be like taking this and multiplying it times six, so we actually have six molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay. In addition, we also have six water molecules. So water is one oxygen atom attached to two hydrogen atoms. So that would be one molecule of water. But just like in the carbon dioxide, we have this six in front, which tells me we have six molecules of this. 
So we'd have to draw six of these, so it would be this times six. Okay? So it requires this amount of water and this amount of carbon dioxide to produce one molecule of uh, glucose, but we'll also get six molecules of oxygen. Now that O2 is simply because oxygen cannot exist by itself. We've talked a little bit about that in class. Oxygen requires two of themselves to complement each other in, in nature. So basically we have an oxygen atom attached to an oxygen atom. Okay, So they're bonded together. This bond is made up by the valence electrons. They're sharing those electrons to complement their outer shell so that they actually feel like they have a full shell. They're making that happen. Okay. Okay, so some other things we can look at is how we can count the molecules. Well, this particular atom or molecule, okay, if we want to count the total number of atoms that make it up, we simply just take the 6, add it to the 12, add it to the 6. So we add these together, and one molecule of glucose is going to have 24 atoms. Now, some other questions that sometimes pop up, it's how many different elements make up one molecule of, of uh, glucose. Well, that answer is not 24. If we have a question such as that, where it says, how many um, elements make up one molecule? Well, there's only three elements, the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. So there's three elements that make up one molecule of uh, glucose. So how many mo uh, elements make up a molecule of oxygen? Just one, oxygen atoms. How many make up uh, water? Two. There's hydrogen and there's oxygen. How many for carbon dioxide? Two. Because there's carbon and there's oxygen. <clears throat> now, we also get into this situation where you see these coefficients. The coefficients are these big numbers in front. Like, let's take this for example. 6H2O. Okay? So let's say we want to count up those atoms. Well, this 6 affects the H, it also affects the O. But anytime we see a small number, it's a subscript. And that subscript simply affects the letter it's next to. So the 6 with the H means that there's normally just two H's, but that 6 multiplies it. So the H will be 6 times 2, so it will be 12. Well, this O does not have a number, so we always assume when there's no number, there's a 1 there. We don't have to write the 1s, but just for the sake of knowing this, there's normally a, there's, there's a pretend 1 sitting there. So the 6 times the 1 will be our answer. So oxygen equals 6 times 1 equals 6. So in this particular situation, 6 molecules of water have, we got to add this up, so we're going to have 18 atoms that make up two mo or six molecules of water. Same thing with this CO2. If you notice, there is a six in front. This is the coefficient. So it affects the uh, C. It also affects the O. So we have six carbon atoms, and we have 12 oxygen because the six times the two is 12. So I hope you understand that. This two is going to multiply the six. So we're going to have a total, so if we total these up, we're going to have 18 atoms that make up these six molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay. Now let's just talk about a few other things here. I'm not interested right now in balancing equations. We're going to talk about that next week, so any balancing equations will not show up on your exam. But there will be things about physical and chemical changes. Physical and chemical. Now physical, I want you to think about your physical appearances for a minute. If we talk about your race, we talk about your height, we talk about your weight, we talk about your eye color, your hair color, whether you're a girl or a boy, those are all things that have to deal with your physical appearances. Okay? So we could describe lots of things. If I wanted to describe, let's say for example, this hole punch. Well, it's heavy. It's gray on the top, it's blue on the bottom, um, it's made out of metal and plastic. Um, those are some things I, I could actually put it on a scale and weigh it. If I wanted to know its boiling point of the metals, I could actually put that in, to, I could take the metal off and figure out what its boiling point is or its melting point. Um, I could 
I can, any way I can describe this would be a physical characteristic. Now, if I broke it, let's say that I dropped this and broke it, then it would still have all the same properties. It's not going to be useful to me anymore, but it still is plastic. It's still metal. We haven't changed anything other than just maybe, you know, breaking it into smaller pieces. Same thing if we were to tear a piece of paper into smaller pieces. It's still paper. Now, one thing that a lot of students will miss on questions such as physical changes is water, for example. If we take water, H2O, and we have it as ice, so we freeze it, it's still water. If we take that ice and we melt it to a liquid, it is still water. If we take that liquid and we turn it into a gas, so we, uh, we heat it up till it turns to a steam or a vapor, it's still water. Because it's still water in all its forms of solid, liquid, and gas, it's just a physical change. Okay? It's just physical change. Chemical changes are when it can't be changed back. A good example of this is firewood. If I take a piece of wood and I burn it and it turns to ash, it's just going to be ash. I can't get the ash to go back to a wood state. So that's a chemical change. In our labs that we've done, you can look back at some of those and see where we've mixed different chemicals together and gotten a different product in the end. One of the really good examples is the dropping out lab. Now in the dropping out lab, we took ammonia and we took a, a solution of Epsom salt, which were both clear liquids. They both look like water. The ammonia had a very strong smell to it, and then the Epsom salt solution smelled a little bit like the ocean water. When we mixed those together, we ended up with a precipitate. And if you remember, a precipitate is when something is formed out of that reaction. So we saw this cloudy uh, white stuff start to form in the solution. And then when it sat there for a while, for a couple hours or so, then all that white particle just kind of settled to the bottom, kind of like sugar in the bottom of a drinking glass. And so it's almost like it magically appeared. Well, it didn't magically appear. What happened was the atoms rearranged themselves from the ammonia and the uh, Epsom salt, and they created a new product in the end, and that was called a precipitate. So sometimes solids will form out of two things that were normally liquids. Great sign of a chemical change. Another good sign of a chemical change is a gas being given off. If you go back and you look at the uh, Lights Out Lab, we created carbon dioxide gas and put out a candle with it. Uh, in class, we also aired up a balloon on an Erlenmeyer flask by mixing uh, vinegar and baking soda together. And that also let us know that a gas is formed because it airs up the balloon. That is also a physical change. I mean, I'm sorry, a chemical change. Now, chemical changes and physical changes can go hand in hand. Let's go back to the burning firewood for just a minute. If I burn a piece of firewood and it turns to ash, it physically changed too, didn't it? It's not that piece of firewood any longer. It doesn't have the same mass any longer. It is definitely something totally different. So its physical appearance changed, but yet its chemical uh, change is what's most obvious. It's not going to be wood any longer. So physical changes happen in, uh, in coincidence or in conjunction with uh, the chemical changes that happen. But when physical changes happen, there is no chemical change, okay? Such as the tearing paper, water uh, being frozen to ice, or uh, water turning into gas, okay? Okay, so that's pretty much got that. Try to think what else is on the test that you may be interested in. I know that you uh, have your review sheet we went over in class. If you've lost your review sheet or you didn't come by after school to pick it up, there is one online. Just go to the Highland Park website under middle school, click on faculty. You'll find my name there, Michael Hayes. Click on that. Then you will go to periods uh, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Click on that link. And you'll see some folders that are there at the bottom of the page. The folder you need to open is second six weeks. Inside that second six weeks, you will see the chemi uh, chemical formula and chemical reaction test review sheets. You can get those again. Unfortunately, the answers are not there. You'll have to go through your textbook and find those answers uh, and, and try to get those. If you're at a loss, you can uh, you know, call a friend that has theirs uh, so that you can go over it with them over the phone or you know, go to their house tonight and check that out. Um, but pretty much uh, those types of details uh, will show up in the test. Um, you should know how to read a periodic table. Those will be available for you in case you need one. Um, but I hope this video helps you out some. I can't really think of too much more that's on the exam, uh, but I would encourage you to go back and look at the labs from this six weeks. Use those to help you out, to re refresh your memory, and I hope that helps you out. If you've watched this video, uh, please make a comment. I'd like, like to know who you are 
and uh, who's paying attention to these videos. So make a comment at the end of the video and just let me know who you are and uh, just really help me out knowing that this video is helping some of the students before they take the test. Anyway, I wish you luck tomorrow. Um, I know that I have a few of you guys that earned the 10 point bonus, so congratulations to you guys for getting your review sheets done and for scoring high enough to make that uh, bonus points, that, that opportunity available to you. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Get lots of rest.